Ed Werder, Mark Brunel here, and of course Caldwell with the Colts. So he's had some really good quarterbacks, including Flacco last year at the end when he was promoted to coordinator. This year, maybe a step back for Flacco, or at least that team. I'll start, I'll start with you with the whole coaching dynamic and, and the fit that you think Caldwell is with the Lions. Well, I talked to Tony Dungy this morning, and Dungy was obviously the head coach, and Jim yep. Caldwell was on that staff. And he told me that there's no question that Jim Caldwell is the best fit for this job, that he has everything that the Lions are looking for and everything that team needs to take the next step. Uh, I think in this job, he carried, Caldwell carried the endorsements of Bill Polian. Uh, Peyton Manning specifically right. uh, went to bat for him in this situation, as well as Tony Dungy. And I think the, one of the criticisms or concerns that people would have about Jim Caldwell is, you know, when you see him speak publicly, he doesn't come across as very dynamic. But I'm told he is much more charismatic and engaged right. when he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation with a player or in front of the entire team. What do you make of Stafford, who, according to Adam, had some, at least, I don't, I don't want to say impact on this deal, but he was involved in it. What do you make from a quarterback perspective to have that dynamic going on? Well, I think it's important to, to understand that Jim Caldwell is, in, is getting a pretty good, quarterback, pretty good quarterback. Now, Matthew Stafford has potential, but many times what potential means is that you haven't done a whole lot yet. But he's a good quarterback. He's had some really good moments. He needs an offensive-minded head coach to come in and take his game to the next level. Jim Caldwell, I mean, look what he's getting. He's getting some incredible talent on the yeah. offensive side of the ball. He's getting Reggie Bush. Uh, he's getting Calvin Johnson. Yep. Calvin Johnson's not, not a bad uh, receiver. There, but it's, a, it's a great hire for the Detroit Lions, no question. And you, you mentioned uh, that the quarterback, Matthew Stafford, was involved in this hire. When Jim Caldwell interviewed there the first time, he actually sat down and watched tape with the guy who's now his head coach. And the endorsement from Dungy is not insignificant. When you had that conversation with Tony, did you actually say, among this group, is this guy the number one guy? Or did he just say, look, there's no question... It doesn't matter who else is out there. Well, he, this, is the, this is the coaching candidate he knew the best because of right. he had been on his staff before. He'd seen what he had done. Uh, he gives him you know, some of the credit for what Peyton Manning accomplished as a quarterback when he was with the Colts. And I think that endorsement ultimately did carry a lot of weight. And it'll be interesting to see, given the technician that Peyton Manning was yes. and, and that you know, Jim Caldwell intimately knows that, right. That's what Matthew Stafford, I think, most people feel he needs. He needs to be better in his technique and, and, and his precision and so forth. He needs to be uh, worked on in that, coach hard in that regard. It's interesting, too, and either one of you can take this, but you now have had Wisenhunt, who was supposed to go to the Lions, instead goes to Tennessee, and now you have Caldwell going to Detroit. W which of these two, and I guess I'll ask you, which of those two teams do you think, if you had your druthers and the deals were the same, would you go coach? You know, I would go to Detroit, simply for the reason I stated, the talent there. You know, they have a quarterback that can be very good at this level, and, and like I said, has, has, had, has had moments where he's been very, very effective. That coupled with who he has surrounding him right. on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively. Now, you look at Ken uh, Wisenhunt at the Titans, the quarterback situation is an issue there, and uh, Jake Locker hasn't really shown that he could play uh, at this level. Um, so I like the Detroit Lions job. And, and Ken Wisenhunt needed a quarterback in Arizona, and he could have drafted Jake Locker, and instead he took Patrick Peterson, right. which obviously has proven to be a good there choice. There are a lot of quarterbacks in this draft. I mean, a lot there of are a lot of quarterbacks, not necessarily high first-round quarterbacks, but a lot of quarterbacks in this drafting. And the choice that you're talking about is the one that Ken Wisenhunt got to make. He right. got to choose between the Lions and all the perceived established talent that they have or the Tennessee Titans. Now, is it easier to get into the playoffs in the AFC? Yeah, probably it is. It's probably easier to win in the AFC South than it is going to be to win consistently in the NFC North where you have to deal with Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Right. Regardless of the names or the jobs that are still left, we've had two now in the last 24 hours. Do you anticipate that that's going to continue? Or are we going to be sitting here tomorrow talking about the next head coach hiring, do you think? Well, I think the next one is likely to be the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, I was told this morning that they have no preconceived ideas as to mm -hmm. what's going to happen in the next 48 hours, but they are interviewing uh, Bengals defensive coordinator Mike Zimmer for the second right. time and for the first time he's meeting with Ziggy Wilf and other members of the ownership group there so that could be a significant development this is a guy who has been an outstanding coordinator with the Cincinnati Bengals he was was with the Dallas Cowboys who regret ever letting him leave the franchise they've not been as good defensively ever since he departed